Zach, you mentioned that you're talking about fatherhood, and, and, and I know that your family is super important to you, and you've, like, everything, your, your priorities completely shifted, like for a lot of us when we have kids, and, and, and you're no exception. And I know that you were really close to your dad. You used to tell me the funniest stories about your dad, and you guys laughed, and you would have so many. You used to talk about, Zach and I did this really great movie for Disney uh, years ago. G-Force. <laughs> that I, I tried to forget about. And the only person who reminds me of it is Zach and my son, who's 12. Um, oh, my nine-year-old <laughs> will remind you of it. <laughs> yeah. This is the guinea pig one, right? <laughs> and, yeah, the guinea pig movie. But Zach, we, I remember when we were doing that, you would tell me these stories about like your dad coming on set and he loved craft service. He couldn't oh, believe. He couldn't, oh, bless. First of all, he couldn't believe that I was, that, I mean, until just a few years ago, he still asked me, are, are you getting paid for what you're doing? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so, so you used to you used to do that, and you for, there were two things. One was that you guys, you and your brother, used to could make him cry really easily, mm -hmm. which I was thought was hilarious. A <laughs> and B, the other one was, what would you and your brother do? You'd go, your, or your brother would do. You'd go into his office when it was kind of like dead at the office. Oh yeah. So my dad wasn't the greatest businessman sometimes, and um, you know, there I remember just going to his office. There was not a lot of stuff going on. And my dad would be sitting there, and my brother and I would sing, there's no business like no business. <laughs> and my father would laugh so hard. That's really funny. He had such a great sense of humor. You know what's interesting, too, as far as show business and your parents? My father passed away a couple years ago. And, um, Sorry about that. That's the other weird thing about it to me. And, and, and my dad got a kick out of me being in show business, probably more than even I did. Put it this way, guys. So I'm from a, a small town. My father, you know how they'll have cutouts of people in movies in the movie theater of the character or whatever, uh -huh. like a cardboard Little cutout? Little stand-up things, yeah. My dad took one from the local theater of me, right? <laughs> yeah. And he stood on the corner of the street with the cutout of me waving to people <laughs> as if, hey, this is my son. Guess how I found out about that? It was in my local paper. Oh. <laughs> so he was so supportive. He was such a beautiful human being. I mean, wow, I love that. He cried out of beauty. Yeah. He just did. He was just the warmest human being. I, I, you know, I love the stories that you would tell about your dad, and you always and you would laugh, but always talk about how much he laughed, how much you and your brother made him laugh was so endearing and such a, such a great connection. And I. I get that too. You know, I, I, I guess sort of later, it's it kind of hit my dad a little later in life what I do and how weird it is. But I, I love that idea that he cut that thing out. Like that, as a father, I can relate to that. Like I would do that to my kid for fucking sure. I, you know, you just love them so much. You just think like, and you don't give a shit. You know, you it, it could seem embarrassing. You don't, you couldn't give two shits if it's embarrassing, right? right. Like you kind of, you get it now. I mean, the other thing about it is, when you get older too, and maybe you guys have a connection to this, man, God, we do a lot, even though we're not trying, there's something deep in our psyche sometimes. We really want to please our parents. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? That never goes away. We really want to just, the, the core of me being in show business in a weird way is probably because I loved the sound of my dad's laughing. Mm -hmm. I mean, as simple as that sounds and is, is kind of dreamy and, my dad, watching Benny Hill or All in the Family with my father and <laughs> listening to those laughs. I mean, my dad would laugh at Benny Hill just like he would laugh at political comedy, mm -hmm. yeah. All in the Family. That noise that he would make, I think there was a craving for me to hear that kind of noise out of human beings for as much as I could get it. It sounds very corny, mm -hmm. but it's true. Does the same stuff make you laugh that made him laugh? Do you guys share the same sense of humor? My dad was very into physical comedy the kind of dirtier stuff or the the more kind of cerebral stuff my dad wasn't much into <laughs> and uh <laughs> so i don't know i've got more influenced by all kinds of stuff but but my dad was my dad had a great sense of humor and he was very very jovial yeah yeah so you wanted to make him laugh i also get that too like i think that I realize now that my, the connection that I had with my dad was if I could make my dad laugh, that was such a real, you can't fake it, right? Like that, I mean, you know if somebody's not really laughing and if I can make my dad laugh in a real way and, and connect with him in that way, that's like a real emotional connection, mm -hmm. you know? Uh, if they sort of commit, and 
so I, I understand that. Like, that's something that's very, very... Sean, you know, you could hear your dad laugh too, but like, the, but in the sound of like, as it's mm. kind of fading away in a car, you know what I mean? <laughs> mm-hmm. no. Yeah, he was real sweet. And with the, maybe the a bottle being thrown out the window. Uh, oh, Sean, I, I don't know the story, but... No, it's uplifting. He, he, he left when I was five. Oh, but no. so, um, so it's just so similar to yours. So, but it sounded like your dad was uh, loved to be the audience while you loved to be the performer. And in that sense, who are you to your kids? Are you, or are you a little bit of both? I'm not the performer in front of my kids. I, I am the audience for sure. I don't, mm-hmm. they don't know that side of me yet. Matter of fact. How you know, old are they? Uh, four and seven. Um, my, mm. my youngest son the other night, I was tucking him in bed. And I don't know if he knows what I do for a living, but he goes, Hey, Dad, uh, he's got a weird accent. <laughs> hey, Dad, uh, have you ever met Hitler in a movie? <laughs> I said, no way. Hitler? He goes, yeah, you ever met Hitler? I go, no. He goes, <laughs> he goes here's a long pause. He goes, he's a pretty weird guy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love that homeschooling you're doing up there. Homeschooling? <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> You guys are just into world history right about now? He's got a, my, my youngest son, I mean, they both have this, you know, kids are funny, I think, naturally. But my youngest one has this way about him that I think he's writing jokes very early in life. Again, I'm tucking him in bed the other night. He, my wife comes in. And he says, hey, hey, Dad, do you ever meet Goring, Harmon Goring? <laughs> Jesus Christ. Did you ever get a chance to pal around with Goebbels? Um, <laughs> what the so fuck? my wife comes in to say goodnight to her youngest son, and my youngest son goes, "Hey, mom, leave us alone. It's just me and daddy want to talk." And she goes, "Okay." And she turns around to leave, and he goes, "I like the back of your head." <laughs> oh, wow! <laughs> right? That's a pretty wow. great joke. Wow! Yeah, it's a pretty great joke. So Zach, Zach, I was just going to say this. So you do all this stuff, and then you're kind of figuring out what's going to, like everybody else, like you kind of alluded to, like you're not getting work and then you are, and we all know how this is. And especially early on, you're kind of, you're trying to pay the bills. You you do what you can and stuff mm-hmm. comes along. And I already mentioned we met doing that, uh, this thing, this kid's movie. And then, um, and then all of a sudden you do, what is it? 2008, 2009, you do the hangover and it kind of changes everything. Your, your life kind of changes uh, a lot of people know who you are already, and you're a very popular stand-up, and you, you, you know, you're, you're quite well known. But the Hangover kind of takes everything to a different level. Mm-hmm. Truly, what was that experience like? How did you notice that shift in your in your life? Well, as far as when we were filming the movie, I remember we were at dinner, and I said to those guys, "Hey, uh, this movie seems pretty good." And I've never had that feeling before in anything I've worked on. <laughs> <laughs> so not yeah. on G-Force? <laughs> oh, God. I'll never forget on G-Force. I'd already been working, talking to Popsicle Sticks for three weeks sure. next to a green screen. Yep. And Will comes yeah. in, you know, Will comes sure. into work, hot shot Will. And I tell Will, I go, look, mm-hmm. just as a warning, don't do any of your bits because these people, they, they have no sense of the humor. <laughs> They're just not going to like it. Really? Within five minutes, he had everyone eating out of his hand. Everyone uh-huh. dying laughing at what, what Will was saying. And I could not get them to laugh for three weeks. <laughs> you thought it was a problem with the audience. I got it. <laughs> it was all me. It was all me. I should have been Zach's agent. I, I come in and he's we're working downtown and he's like riding his bike to some shithole hotel in downtown LA. And I'm like, dude, what are you doing? No, I go, no, 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 you're moving hotels. Remember I got you moved? You That's moved right. to where I was staying. Do you remember that? That's right. I was right. like, you can't, you got to treat yourself better. You got to, they got to treat right. you better. That's right. I, and, and they offered me a teleprompter on that movie. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> it was. Oh, were you struggling? Well, were there a lot of monologues for you on G-Force, sir? Well, the, none of it made sense. I mean, it's, sure, I know. It's, you know, it, it was a fantastical kids movie that didn't, the dialogue didn't really matter. <laughs> and, <laughs> I can't memorize things that aren't... That don't matter. Right. Yeah. When you're talking to a hamster, it's hard to link thoughts together. No, Jason, you have to understand, Zach and I found out late in the game, this is true, the director told us one night, I think, he said, well, yeah, we were like, how'd you come up with the idea for this movie? And he said that his, like, nine-year-old son, it was his nine-year-old son's idea. 
And then we're like, oh, great. We're doing a movie that was written by a nine-year-old. <laughs> I'd love to see Zach's son pitch out with the sequel with the other kid. Maybe the, the hamsters save Eastern Europe. Sure. My sons will go nowhere near show business. You understand me? <laughs> oh, wow. It took a turn. Bateman's gunning for him. Bateman's gonna go. So wait, so Zach, so Zach, so you do you do the movie, uh, you do all this stuff, and then you start doing the hangover and you say to the guys, this feels different. Yeah, so I, I kind of felt that this seemed not that it would be big, but it would be uh, something that was funny and and kind of fresh. But then the movie came out and it seemed uh more people can recognize your face and that that's an interesting thing to navigate because as it's an asymmetrical relationship. And if you know who you are already, because I was an older dude, you know, and um, I wasn't too good with the being known stuff. And looking back, I'm kind of embarrassed by how I was not good with it. Um, I was threatened by it, I think. How are you threatened by it? Well, first of all, I'm of the mind there is no culture in celebrity culture, right? So I already know that going in. And that whole idea of it and the worship of it is why we ended up with that, you know, Will's favorite president. So, um, yeah. you voted for him four times. <laughs> yeah. Weird. <laughs> um, was there anything about it that you were like, oh, well, actually, this is not bad? Like, could you get a table at a restaurant you always wanted to get into? Did you did you have a quick conversation with somebody who you admired and and you didn't have to and they wanted to talk to you? Like, some people find certain things about it. You know, obviously, the money and all that kind of crap. But was there anything about it that you were like, oh, if it, if it was just this, that would be great. You know, I'm I'm pretty grateful for it all now because it's it was such a it was an exciting thing to go through. But it, it, the the privacy thing is, yeah, you know, that's the only bummer of it is. Um, and I'm not really one to go to restaurants and get a nice table and do that anyway. Right. Yeah. Uh, so it was a shift. It was just a shift, and people also thought I was that character. Right. Or expecting you to be funny right. all the time. Yeah, and right. to be a wild and crazy dude. And I'm not, I mean, I have been in the past a bit, but I'm, I'm, I'm not like that. So it was just a process. But now it's, like I said, I'm a little embarrassed how I kind of was angry at that. But it's understandable because it pushes you out of your, your comfort. If you're, not, if you're not naturally a ham, if you don't naturally are attracted to the center of the stage, then it is immediately an imposition because you, you, you lose your anonymity. You can't disappear in a crowd. You but can't I think, just... Jason, that most people think if you're an actor, you want, there's only one type of actor, right? Which is the center of attention, right. which is, you know, and, and a lot, some right. of us are just not that. And there is a difference, yeah. But it, but it's not just the center of the stage. I mean, you want to do you are a performer, and you but but you want to do it under the conditions that are you know that you control that you control. Yeah. But when you walk home and you're walking to the store or you're doing whatever, that that shouldn't count. It feels like that that's part of the agreement. Like, hey, fuck, hang on a second, this wasn't part of the deal. And unfortunately, once you get to a certain place, it is the deal. Right. It is the deal, and but you can't, you can't, you have to know at this point. Everybody can read and has a TV and the internet and the and social media that you you know that's part of the deal when you get into it. You can't not know that. Yeah. Right. Yeah. That's right. Yeah, but you can't control the the level of exposure and notoriety that that you're going to get. The, you know, um, Zach felt like he was in the middle of a really good movie. He had no idea whether it was going to be a huge commercial right. success or not. The fact that it was meant he lost his anonymity. And your it seems like your whole uh, performance draw, like what you'd like to do, it has a very sort of democratic uh, equality type of thing. And when you're on stage doing stand up, you're you're with the people. You're not up there. They're telling them what's funny. You're kind of. It seems like you're in. There's a. There's an equality uh, hmm. with with your with your presence with with the audience as opposed to, hmm. I am above you almost literally and figuratively giving you comedy and you better laugh at it. So yeah, that's more of a confidence thing that I've never felt comfortable with, even knowing what I'm talking about in any situation. But going back to the kind of being known thing. The other thing is that, and I always make a joke that, you know, nobody walks up to me that has a Dr. Smock on. It's always somebody with a Who Farted t-shirt. <laughs> <You know? laughs> but it's also the interaction that I get is probably different interaction than, you know, a lot of actor types get, which is, 
this is all true. I mean, I've had people come up to me and go, I'm so sorry to say this, but has anyone ever told you you look like Zach Galifianakis? That's sure. Apologies first. <laughs> I love how they try to soften it. I'm so sorry. <laughs> sure. Yeah. 